Hey there. Welcome to another episode. Uh thank you so much for tuning in and your continued support. We appreciate it. Today is going to be a slightly different episode because it's the first time that it's going to be just me. That's right. Uh it's going to be just me, Shanti. There's no guest. There's no Neha either. Um we will but more about that towards the end of the podcast and also an announcement. So stick around uh, till the end for that. Uh thank you so much for your support. Uh so today's episode is going to be about something I've been wanting to do for a very long time. You see, I write music reviews. I write music reviews for this website called A Humming Heart. It's a website that focuses on indie music from India primarily and they've been doing some great things on the website so shout out to them. Um so I started writing music reviews on 3 years ago and o- over the course of these 3 years I've r- written over like 100 music reviews so that's actually quite a huge milestone for me and it's something I'm proud of um but I've always wanted to document what actually goes into music reviews I, because I see a lot of um let's say confusion online or a lot of backlash to music reviews uh, or reviewers that you see one very bald music reviewer comes to mind um so i always wanted to document the way i approach music reviews and you know the nature of music reviews and what uh, space that they share in in today's pop culture right So before I get into how I approach a music review let's just begin with what a music review is right so the way i would uh, define a music review is one person or an organization's opinion on a piece of work and that's all it is it's an opinion it is a point of view it is a perspective that's all it is it is not fact bad music review shouldn't be taken as the gold standard of public discourse or what everybody should think although it may be hard and we'll get into why it may be hard for people to form their own rev- uh, opinions based on um, the way uh, certain organizations portray uh, pieces of work right and and reviews have been around for a long time right uh, reviews have existed since the days of theater or even beyond uh, before that um, but and and they existed primarily to inform uh, consumers of s- said art like theater or music or uh, movies because um, you know uh, there was a time when these were commodities that weren't really uh, you know affordable to the common man like the common man couldn't really afford to buy every music record or watch every movie so it was it was more of a time and a money investment so the uh, the reviewing industry sort of came up to sort of inform audiences okay these you you should check these ones out don't check these ones out and then over time it kind of became like an an art form in in and of itself right um uh, so they all and um music reviewers also had a second function which was to which was their influence right uh if uh, because since popular music review okay excuse my cat please um so po- popular music reviewers existed um, and, and they would uh, typically inform the um, collective consciousness of people who would consume this art right so you primarily would have um let's say a film reviewer who would say okay this is a good film and then you would and that would actually drive ticket sales good reviews of an album would actually drive um, record sales and you know uh, get these bands on the radio so uh, over time these in these music reviewers did have a lot of influence over public discourse about how a piece of art was talked about right so that was the main function of music re- uh, music reviews back when uh, music was more of an expensive commodity than it is today right um but but over time as you know with, with the with the with the internet and like the democratization of music where you can just access whatever you want really quickly over the internet the function of music reviews have changed over the past uh, couple of decades today they exist primarily to promote dialogue to have a person's voice heard because a voice of a person is actually a commodity right the more traffic you drive the more money you make and also the more dialogue the more influential you are the more traffic you make and that translates into influence and in dollars right and 
music reviewers today also act as a recommendation engine because uh, although you do have software based ai based recommendation engines that exist today um you know having a person who actually sits and listens to pieces of music and just and uh, you know you trusting the person uh, assuming that you are, the person actually listened to enough pieces of work to actually say that okay this is a good piece of work this is not that uh, is used by a lot of people to you know act as a sort of a de facto recommendation engine although this is just their opinion right and uh, so this is also a testament to how influential music reviewers are a lot of the music reviews today also exist to promote artists right so if you have artists up and coming a music review could greatly influence their streaming numbers and their popularity and um, which is why you see a lot of artists vying to get uh, a piece of, of their music right regardless of whether or not it's good or bad even if it's bad you will see people consuming the music just because of the review right and also um since music reviewers are people who have listened to a lot of music they are the music nerds that you know we we typically refer to we do uh, listen to them or read about their uh, work to get a different perspective on how music can be perceived every single person listens to music in a different way every single person perceives and listens and uh, you know feels uh, the impact of music in a different way and a different perspective is always a good thing a different perspective can greatly enhance the way you consume music as well right uh, so that's the, that so that's what i think is a function of these music reviews today they they could be based on uh, you know the internet you know uh, the, okay, they are mostly internet based but they could be text based or they could be audio based or they could be video based you know uh, depending on what, uh, regardless of what medium they are in this is primarily the music uh, the function of music reviews today right uh, so what is a music review uh, i mean i i've touched on this before but what actually constitutes a music review right um so depending on who it is you may there are different styles as to how people approach writing a music review right some people like to go more contextual right by that what i mean is um a lot of the way we uh, consume art is largely dependent on the artist and this is especially true in music right because the music is always in- inextricably tra- tied to the artist's personality right it's uh, it's the artist's personality who comes through the music you know like michael jackson david bowie kanye west the beatles you know the the lore surrounding the artist always is always tied to the way we kind of consume music so a lot of music reviewers take that as the hook you know the public discourse maybe what the artist has been up to recently you know the art um anything re- related to you know had the artist place in pop culture and dialogue today so that could be the focus of a music review you know and how this work sort of uh, plays into that sort of image in the public eye a lot of people do go track by track and not focus on any of these uh, uh, extraneous factors a, a lot of people just go track by track okay this is a good track this is a bad track and a, a lot of people also go into you know, slightly more big picture slightly less granular but but more like hey okay this is how this is what the album is in the context of this entire person's discography this is what the artist is trying to say through this album and so on and so forth you do see a mix of these different perspectives and diff- different types of view or who or who they are but this is basically what i've seen you have more contextual people and you have more uh, uh, um, parochial minded or granular minded uh, m- music review which and both of these have their own function both of these have um, draw their own kind of separate audiences so pick and choose which ones you like based on what you like to see out of a music review right all right so um yeah so now let's get to how i personally uh, approach music reviews hopefully this is going to be a shorter episode you know you, you never know with these so all right so let's get into how i approach a music review right all right so so the way i i i go about it is um, and and this is strictly my opinion this is strictly the way i do it uh, of course different people do it in different ways but this is just for you to have an idea of just how one person goes about thinking about an album thinking about a song or an ep or you know any piece of work right so 
the way i go about it is i before even listening to the album i or, or the song or whatever it is i first look at the artist right who are they what is their vibe how do they present themselves who are the members of the uh, of the band or whatever if it's a solo artist it's just a solo artist right uh, how long have they been around have they been significant in the public eye like these things may or may not seem important to you but these things inform who the artist is and what their vision is you know and uh, the way they portray their art and the, it is uh, it it you know a lot of people do argue that you know you, uh, the artist and art needs to be separated and you just need to go with the album and i respect those opinions but then um you know i i see art as and you know music in particular as you know just uh, a, a a unique form of expression which is uh, which is so deeply tied to the personality of the person who is uh, creating the art right so if there are people who are who just you know stir a lot of controversy in the public discourse if uh, they've been around for, around for a long time then you know you have you approach them in a slightly different way than if it's like a debut album right have they been significant in the public i definitely um and what is their vibe are they like rebellious are they more silent are they you know do they stand up for a, a lot of social change you know whom who do they appeal to who are their primary uh, target audiences a lot of these things are very important uh, and although they may not factor into the album score itself analyzing the album through this lens actually helps me a lot and this is actually something i've learned it actually enhances the way you uh, me as a music reviewer uh, I, i look at the album itself right all right so now i've looked at the artists uh, i know who they are and uh, i i know i know what their vibe is all right so now i go through their discography um, you know i i don't listen to the entire discography because they are typically long but you know i i just i i like to have an idea of what they've put out so far right what the genre is uh, do they change genres very often you know um, how often do they release this are also plays a factor are, are they extremely prolific do they take a lot of time to release their albums you know th- these things are um, these things also inform the way the album at hand or the work at hand is perceived right so the public i uh, so all these things are extremely important and okay so after going through the discography after skimming through what they do and after you know i i, I try to stay away from what other people have said about their discography i try to skim through a few songs and a few albums uh, i you know just just to have an idea of what kind of songs they are what kind of sorry what kind of artists they are and uh, although this may not um, be very accurate you know of uh, for a lot of artists the, the most popular songs uh, that you see on spotify don't generally represent who they are case in point radiohead you know creep is the most popular song but that uh, it couldn't be farther away from who the band really are right uh, at present so it, it isn't reliable but it typically gives you a good idea of okay uh, wh- how do they present their music what is their music about what are they about so i i typically go through their top few songs if they have an insanely popular album then i listen to that uh all this is definitely easier if it's a debut album you know of course um right so i've skimmed through their discography now coming to the album itself how do i analyze the album and uh so this is something where I, i've actually developed a technique over the over the years right it's um uh, it it's been something that you know i it used to be a more uh, chaotic approach but now i have like a streamlined process for how i approach an album right so i i i give two cursory lessons compulsory for any ep any album two cursory lessons just me with my headphones and just listening to it end to end right and this is just me imbibing the album absorbing it you know uh, with without really thinking too much you know i i don't really think to i don't if if things stand out then sure i it would stand out and i would take note of it but it would just me listening like trying to enjoy the album trying to understand what the album is and then after of the two cursory lessons i go for a deep dive you know uh the deep dive typically is you know you i listen intently okay the the production quality is the lyrics definitely the lyrics uh subtle instrumental choices subtle production choices you know lyrical themes uh musical motifs you know things that stand out between tracks the, how are the tracks tied together um uh 
typically you see albums where you know uh, uh, there are a lot of callbacks between tracks you know you have tracks referencing each other in terms of vertical themes you have a lot of musical motifs uh, and i mean f- uh, for those who don't know a musical motif is a musical idea it could be a phrase it could be anything which uh, which sort of repeats over the course of the work right which kind of uh, adds to the depth of the album a- adds to what they are trying to convey through the album so that is another thing that you 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 want to pick up and so you basically listen to the so i basically listen to the entire thing and you know i it's definitely these themes these thematic themes that basically tie everything together and also uh and also you know just um a, a, a deeper listen into uh, each and everything that they they trying to convey so in this deep dive what do i do right uh i think about firstly i think about what the artist is going for what are they trying to uh, who are they appealing to right what are they appealing to um like who are they appealing to meaning okay who are who would i think are there would there be primary listeners be what is the function of this album right what are they appealing to what types of emotions what type of responses are they uh, hoping to get out of the listener right basically what are the artist's goals with the album why does this album exist why have the artists spent so much time recording and producing and releasing and promoting this album right so that is something that's extremely important before i even think about you know scoring it or, or even going further right just understanding what the artist is going for what are they aiming for right uh, extremely important um beyond that uh, so uh, the the next step would be okay i would uh, all these things would happen on the first deep dive lesson and then i kind of go track by track right and then I, i every track i listen to i think about okay to what extent have they achieved or failed to achieve their these goals right um you know uh, if 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 they're going for kind of like an acoustic singer songwriter thing you know it's maybe it's like an album about love or heartbreak or something um so i think about okay how um to what extent have they uh, fleshed out these emotions am, am i do, do i feel these emotions is it just too generic is it just like um i'm 14 and this is a deep type of thing or is it some is it something genuine or you know um, that kind of a thing if it's uh, if it's more like a party car sort of a thing then okay uh, what uh, am i am i really vibing to this is it like is it serving the function of a party album you know if it's just um, if it, if it's something meant to be more involved the much more complex emotions i just go with okay am i feeling what it is how genuine is this are they is this just act on are they just being are they just ripping off other people that i've heard of before you know um and you know uh, how how much are they actually wearing their influences on their sleeve so influences is actually another thing that's extremely important right all artists every single artist is influenced by somebody there is no artist who has not taken influences from anyone period that's just how it works right all art is based on previous art right and sometimes these influences are much more clearer than other times right so if um, and it's okay to be influenced there there's nothing wrong with that right but if an artist is just uh doing like a, a copy paste of their influences right if it's just going to be an influence uh if it's just going to be a shameless homage right if it's uh, you can th- there's a huge difference between being a homage to someone and just like ripping them off and that is something that's very clearly evident the more you listen to music right so that is another, another thing that i um, think about the influences uh, and you know track by track to what extent have they achieved or failed to achieve what they're going for right am i really feeling it the the authenticity of what they're doing and so on and then of course i look at the musical prowess right uh, how um, you know how, how the the basic performances like it could be the vocal performances it could be the guitar um, performance it could be the drumming and uh, and so on you know the basically the the technical prowess of the band you know uh, this is not necessary because a lot of time in music you you don't really require technical prowess is more about the idea so in that case it could be uh, you know just the creativity you know the freshness of the idea and so on um so all, all this comes under musical prowess like have i heard these ideas before uh, is it just something that r- rinse and repeat right so that that is another thing that i think about 
and also production quality right uh, production quality is something that's not easy to pick up if you're just starting to think about music critically right it's something that you kind of learn about over time it's um although it's a very important part of music uh, i wouldn't stress uh that you know if you're not familiar with production quality it's very it's fine if you skip this part but um the way music is put together right the way it is mixed you know the way you you know how um um the way basically the way it's presented you know are there uh, some things that the producer has added you know like maybe like a string quartet or something in the background that um and and you know just the way all these tracks all these different instruments uh, come together to form the song right um that is also something so uh, and the term production varies widely across genres production means a different thing when it comes to rock and instrumental music than when it comes to hip hop right where hip hop is more about sampling and you know the beats themselves so the production quality in hip hop would be uh, the quality of the beats and the way it's mixed and you know the creativity when it comes to that um another thing that i look for is writing you know the the if if there are lyrics and if lyrics are really like the Uh, if the lyrics seem to be what the artist is emphasizing on right like sometimes li- uh, lyrics may not be something that is uh, intended to convey meaning right like case in point daft punk daft punk around the world has been consistently been made fun of for just having one line repeat over and over again and that that's okay you know uh, because the the function of the lyric is just to you know uh, it's a different function than to convey like a deeper set of meanings right which is okay so if the artist is intending to convey certain ideas through their writing and through their songwriting and their lyrics then i would definitely analyze that to what extent have they fleshed out these themes uh, have i heard these i uh, know are they are they using a lot of cliches are they uh are, are they not are they being inauthentic or authentic or you know in uh, in what does it uh, invoke an emotional response to me right and while writing a music review although it's it can be really hard i try to keep my own personal uh, genre preferences uh, and taste aside and just analyze which is why i i think it's so important to start thinking about the album by okay what are they going for you know and so once you have a clear understanding of what the artist is aiming for then it's it becomes very easy to set your own biases aside and just analyze it based on that right so so that's what comes to writing and another extremely important thing when it comes to reviewing music is album cohesion and album flow if it's an album or if it's an ep right so what do i mean by that when you listen to an album there ha- the f- the tracks that the artist has spent a lot of time trying to uh, put these tracks together right to put these tracks together in a certain order to convey a certain idea a certain uh, emotion a certain narrative right so when so over listening to the course of the album do the tracks flow together it doesn't make sense the way the tracks are organized together is this is there a Uh, you know are the is the quality varying too much are the styles varying too much do they not fit together really well is it just like an unpleasant listen from track to track even though the tracks themselves may be good the transitions and you know, the order of the tracks matter a lot uh, when it comes to enjoying the album overall right and if it's a narrative or an emotional narrative that's being purported by the artist that flow that uh, sort of rhythm you know pun intended over the entire album is uh, very is very important so cohesion between tracks you know uh, do these tracks fit together in the same album do these tracks belong in the, uh, together in the same album that cohesion matters and this is also something that you can you only understand after listening to a lot of albums right you understand that okay this track definition be in this album this track should have just been left on the uh, cutting room floor or released with another album and so on and also the flow which is extremely important the best albums are the albums that flow the best between tracks the best albums are albums where the songs come together in a really cohesive way and the sum of the parts wait let me get this right right the whole is greater than the sum of the parts sorry um 
so yeah that's uh, that's uh, that's that's basically how i approach music sorry that was my cat push my keyboard off the table uh it's his birthday by the way happy birthday spark um so right so that is basically how i approach writing a review so i go track by track and um and i i also think about all these other aspects that i just mentioned right now how do i score albums right um now this the score for each track comes down to these attributes that i mentioned before right it could be the uh, the writing quality production quality the technical mastery of the artists and so on and also how 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 much have they achieved what they are going for with the album um so i typically give each song a score on a scale of 0.5 or 1 right it's like a trinary system that i have it, it's very rudimentary but it works so each each track kind of gets a score of 0 0 if it's terrible if it's unlistenable 0.5 if i'm just like mad about it and 1 if it's something i i, I genuinely enjoy it right and i kind of tally these scores across the entire album and i i add them up and i i give them an average over a scale of 10 and uh, on top of that i add points brownie points for production quality album cohesion album flow and uh, so on and yeah and uh, how if it's too long or if it's too short you know i i, I would uh, take out points if it's just the right length i would add points and so on i i'm typically kind of lenient with the way i score albums and uh, yeah and so album scores don't really matter album reviews don't really matter uh, per se but uh, album scores don't matter at all because it's just like putting down a number for you know something that's a very complex piece of work right you cannot really grade a uh, piece of work on on a numerical score on la- or like an alphabet score but we just do it you know because it's uh, it's a it's an easy way for to tell people okay uh, definitely check this out or don't check it out right so it's uh, it's a necessary evil in my opinion um so yeah um so key takeaways from this right uh, number one is album reviews do not matter album reviews are just one geek's opinion or one music nerd's opinion uh and that's it it's it, the function of album review should just be either to get a recommendation or to uh, you know get a different perspective the content don't take the content of the score too personally right because every time you see pitch for coming out of the controversial review you have a lot of these you have so much backlash to the score you know and any uh, and this goes for any music reviewer online as well right music reviews don't matter the uh, it's just a different perspective is just one person's opinion right um that person may have heard a lot more music than you have uh, because that th- they've chose this profession but that doesn't mean that their opinions are absolute right you are definitely welcome to disagree or agree with that person and that goes without saying so uh, getting mad over music reviews you don't agree with it's kind of nonsensical and uh, it it's kind of petty you know um so I hope you took away how to approach albums from this uh, episode you know um the way I approach albums I think it's kind of systematic I've developed a system over the years and uh, I hope you guys kind of take something out of it um uh, and uh a last thing I would say is keep an open mind here uh, you know um be open to other perspectives uh, it's uh, discourse is gen- is always good but only if it's like a positive discourse in the sense that you know um, healthy disagreements right um yeah that's basically what i had to say about music reviews i hope you guys found this helpful uh, please let me know if there are clarifications or any disagreements are welcome please uh, drop us a dm on instagram or you, you can yeah that's the primary way to contact us actually on instagram so it's at the social suicide um please do contact us right so i mentioned earlier that we have an announcement um, so th- there has been some uh, unexpected event that we we weren't really anticipating uh, and for this reason we may not be uploading podcasts for a while we don't know how long but we're definitely planning to be back uh, it's very unfortunate that um, you know this event kind of had to happen and we had to put a pause on it and you know life sucks life happens but this podcast is something that 
has added a lot to our lives and uh, it's uh, we've certainly seen a lot of positive response especially from the mental health episodes so we will definitely be back we will definitely give you content that you like and uh, yeah that's all we i had to say um this episode is kind of weird because uh, it was just me talking um never done this before um so any feedback is welcome any uh, constructive criticism is welcome and yeah have a good day thank you